Hey Gainesville, it's Andy Malden with Bepine Realty and one of the sponsors of the Woe GNV podcast. I uh, just wanted to say I'm thinking of all of you. I know all of our lives have really been turned upside down. What was important just a short time ago doesn't seem so important now. Uh, priorities have shifted, our behavior has shifted, uh, and times are tough for a lot of us. But I just wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you for supporting the podcast and thank you for supporting the local businesses here in Gainesville and please continue to do so. Um, this is temporary. There's a light at the end of the tunnel and we will all get through this together and stay strong together. Be safe, be healthy, and God bless. You are listening to WHOA Podcast coming to you from Gainesville, Florida. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the WHOA GNV Podcast, the Coronavirus Sessions. Uh, this is what's happening, you guys. We are out to help the Gainesville community navigate everything that's going on with this coronavirus. I know it's impacted a lot of businesses, and so we decided to go into a little, uh, a little bit of a Zoom format because we want to one practice our social distancing, right, Michael? Like, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> You're practice so far our, away. <laughs> practice our social distancing, um, but at the same time, like still keep the podcast going, switch format a little bit, go to a, a daily a daily session, a weekday session. We're going to release these at noon. They're going to be about a half hour long, and we're going to talk to members of the Gainesville community, uh, business leaders, business professionals, uh, really, really a whole variety of people just to kind of see how this has impacted them and their business and, um, you know, or them and their lives and like, and, you know, talk about how we've adapted, how we change it, what, what's ahead in order to like really just ha- educate you guys, our audience, um, and, uh, and hopefully pull everybody through this thing, uh, limit the number of businesses that have to close or the number of people that have to get laid off. Um, so th- this is why we're doing it. And we don't know how long we'll be doing these coronavirus sessions, but we'll do them until we get through this baby together. Um, so Let's get let's get right into it. Of course, my name is Colin Austin. I'm your host, and my co-host is the one, the only, Michael Dees. Mike, what is up, man? Not much, man. I am uh, kind of getting a little too used to this. We were just talking about it. He, he said I looked like like rested. And I told him it's because I'm not keeping these retail hours anymore. <laughs> yeah, we got to change that. We got to get you back in there. <laughs> yeah, you got you to get those bags <laughs> under my eyes again. You know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, before we get into the show, I want to definitely give a shout out to our sponsor. Today's today's sponsor is Andy Malden, realtor. He was just on episode 100, baby. <laughs> or actually, I don't know. This might actually come out before episode 100. I don't know. It's probably going to co- come around. But make sure you check out the real estate mastermind session that we did. It was uh, episode 100. Andy was on there with five other realtors, but he's been a sponsor of our podcast uh, this first quarter. I can't believe first, quarter number one is over with. I can't believe like over. it was definitely not the quarter that I expected, <laughs> uh, but we're still here at the end of it nonetheless. And, uh, you know, so it does, if you, if you are, uh, looking for a home, looking to buy or sell a home, definitely contact Andy. Uh, the best way to do so is on his Instagram account, A N D Y M A U L D I N realtor, Andy Malden realtor. Um, just drop him a direct message on Instagram and he will be happy to take care of you. He is a true ACR baby, Latra County resident. That's right. Let's go. I, I know. Yes. It's, go ahead. Will. I was gonna say I know. I know he's gonna be there on April tenth when we do our uh, little Zoom meeting. Uh, is he? I'm sure. I'm sure Andy's gonna check in with that. Yeah, that'll, that'll be cool. He sponsored the open bar at the uh, at episode one hundred too. Right. So if you haven't if you haven't checked out the side hustle there, um, that was. I mean, I, I hate to admit it, but I was I was toasty, man. I was toasty after <laughs> two and a half <laughs> two and a half hours a of drinking. Yeah, two and a half hours of drinking on the podcast. Then we're like, oh, let's film another 40 minutes of side hustle. Uh, I, was, I, was a little, I was a little toasty. So I apologize to our audience for my uh, drunkenness on, on the show. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but um, you guys, today I want to introduce a really good friend of mine, uh, Rafael Diaz of Main Street Motors, baby. Rafael, what's up, man? Great day to be alive, man. Great day to live. Yes. Very yes, thankful sir. to be here, man. Thank you so much for. I feel like um, I'm a little stargazed right now because I'm on the World <laughs> Coronavirus series. <laughs> uh, it's like surreal. 
it's amazing and uh super thankful to be here man very very thankful thanks for even like giving me the opportunity to voice where we come from from our side so thank you yeah man so so like let's get right into it i mean tell us tell us what's going on since this since this baby started to really hit and all these announcements started taking over Gainesville and mm. started closing businesses like what like what was the first action that you took and uh tell me about tell me a little bit about it yeah so i'm in the car business and just started a, a dealership six months ago which is the worst time to start a car you know <laughs> a dealership right on main street and my operation is i would say medium to uh larger size compared to what you usually start off with so i bought you know i didn't buy i got a commercial real uh commercial um uh, spot on Main Street and you know to jump in full force was already a risk and then for this to hit and not to mention we have a baby on the way me and my wife Dr. Sabrina Diaz oh man super thankful for that <laughs> Congrats, we have man. a baby on the way so it's like go time so the first thing I did was scream like you know scared I had like uh, 48 hours of just pure like information overload would probably be the my first reaction which i don't recommend <laughs> so i don't know <laughs> so it was pretty tough man that the at first reaction um like how am i going to pay the bills how is this going to change is this a two-week thing two-month thing two-year thing we don't know so so did you take like what, what were your first steps? I mean, after after screaming, <laughs> I mean, what, yeah. Like, so what, what did you do? Yeah. So basically, um, the first step was to really evaluate if we needed to shut down, because you know we have safety to really think about on the public. Uh, we have our safety of our of our staff. Um, if something was to happen to uh, somebody I know um, here because of my negligence it would really hurt me, you know, emotionally. I mean, forget the legal and the business aspect. I mean, I'm from a human aspect, I, I, I would, that would really hurt me, man. Cause you'll never be able to know like, oh man, that was you or not. So it was, it, it was you. really, sorry. Um, it was really a, uh, I don't know, man. Like the, the first action was to figure out I need to shut down. And we did, we did shut down. That is what we did. Um, it was for us. I, I'm not recommending this for everybody out there, but for us, we were able to say, "Hey, let's at least reset. Let's at least take a pause um, for about a week." We uh, shut down, and we had a situation where it really became real when one of our clients uh, got confirmed that he had coronavirus, and we have his vehicle. So, you know. Uh, that's when we were like, okay, we really got to just put everything on pause. So the first action was to try to go mobile as fast as humanly possible. Try to get the staff to work from the home as fast as possible. Um, and those were really our, our action step, man. It was like immediately like, okay, we know we got to go mobile. All right, guys, we know we got to work from the house. and and the trick you and then work out the details of that as we work things out. So what was the biggest challenge in getting everybody at mobile? Like you said, I mean, did you have kind of like infrastructure set up for that to be seamless yeah. at all? Or was it a big hurdle? Yeah. One of the greatest, if you guys ever, if you guys ever see uh, jujitsu fighters, you know, and you see that 150 <laughs> pound guy, you know, like just super versatile and like his, legs are all flimsy and you can see them that's us we can get like our legs flimsy and we can get into weird chokeholds you know um our, our staff is like so mobile and so versatile that and there's such a small crew that for us in our situation we we're able to get everybody mobile take the computer home take uh um take the credit card machine home uh i don't know how legal it is i don't even know like we're trying to figure this out but let's just work it out um our biggest challenge is that i'm not in somebody's uh, my energy my eyes aren't with you and a lot of times that's what it takes is 
internal fire motivation. So when, you know, my sales manager's at the house, you know, and trying to, we're trying to do our meetings and I'm waiting for them to finish the conversation so that I can jump in. Like, you know, cause meetings over the, like this is happening right now is great, but there's something about just sensing the fire of the owner. Like, like it's like a physical thing, I think. So that has been my challenge is the motivation um, and the adjustment period for the sales staff to like do our meetings, do our execution um, and follow through. Cause I'm not there. I'm not in, I'm not in, in their zone. You know, I'm not like walking around every five minutes. Hey, what's up? You know, it's real hard for me to imagine how, how you and Colin could be friends. <laughs> <laughs> we have to take turns. We take turns with our, <laughs> <laughs> with our with our, our energy, fire with the fire with the passion fire. baby the passion i mean so like i mean even here <laughs> excuse me even hearing that um i mean we took kind of similar steps i mean we i felt like we were trying to really assess what was going on um we didn't take a week off but like we took we worked that monday tuesday and wednesday to get as much storage like that first week when all this started happening we took monday tuesday and wednesday to get as much of the scooter storage in as humanly possible we're like all right storage 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 like this is going to be the only revenue let's go and then and then i gave the team let's uh, we said okay take take thursday and friday off like go take care of family go buy your toilet paper like go like go do <laughs> go go do the things that go do the things that you need to get done and we'll see you Monday. And so we really gave everybody like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to kind of reset, evaluate the situation for themselves and get focused. Um, and then, and then we came back and then from there we m made the call that we were going to switch formats after, you know, after a couple of days we worked Monday and Tuesday and then, and then said, okay, we're going to, we're going to change things up. We're going to go to a remote process. This is, this is definitely going to, continue to grow and continue to go on the path that it's going. So we might as well get as prepared as possible now. Um, and, and from that standpoint, I don't know, like, and Mike, maybe, you know, or maybe, maybe Raphael, you know, like in terms of the numbers, it seems, it seems from my perspective that this staying at home stuff is working. I mean, I know it's still early, but it seems like in, in terms of the number of cases that, have heard it's like it has slowed at least in this county do you know if that's true mike or no right well we're only just starting to find that out because of the time it takes uh to flatten the curve is that that, that phrase that everybody's getting used to now right um you don't find that out until weeks after you start and that's why it's so controversial people are saying hey we need to go back to work right now it's not working it's whatever it's like we don't know if it's working until maybe like right now two weeks into this we can kind of start to see is this having the effect uh, that it's had in other countries? Because we, we know that it's successful. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Raphael, real quick. I mean, you fall in that essential business category like we do. Yeah. So, so I mean, is your, you said your sales manager, you like your sales team, like they're, they're not there. Is it just you at the dealership or are you like, how are you navigating this in, in the present? So, let me re retrace something back. The moment that I knew that I, I was trusting my gut instinct that what happened in China and Italy was coming to America, I immediately, we, we have uh, almost 30 cars. We immediately cleaned up all the cars and did five minute videos of every car. And that took three days um, to cut and shoot the videos. Um, that happened pretty quick. And I was doing that, uh, you know, this is where me and you, Colin, have talked about this, which is either you're a true entrepreneur that's willing to get his hands dirty and because it's your money on the line and you're trying to hustle as hard as possible for you and your family and your staff's sake, um, or you're somebody who's borrowed everybody else's money, just kind of like nonchalantly, it is what it is. Um, and if the business fails, the business fails, whatever. Whoops. Sorry, creditors. No, man. Like I was out there for three days with a busted ankle because I, you know, busted it all up for three days, like cracked in two different spots, you know, but that's what we had to do. And I just wanted to reiterate to anybody out there 
yeah, you're not supposed to operate out of fear and like in trembling and where it's crippling you. But if you're that guy that's nonchalantly not getting yourself mobile, you better wake up, man. Like wake up guys because it's go time. And that's when we figure that out. The moment I figure that out and I trusted my gut instinct is like, Raphael, you got to get mobile and you got to get um, clean cars, mobile, viewable to the, to the public. So that's what we've done. Um, we had one in one situation. Let me say this. And I don't know if this happened to you guys, but uh, one of my employees, I get the call that one of the employees got a, um, he's like, dude, I don't feel good going to the hospital. I'm like, oh no. And I'm like, oh no. So immediately I am like, oh man, I'm like I'm worried. It was like eight hours for the test results to come back. And guess what? He tested negative so i was like oh my gosh thank you god you know that this kid's safe and okay um so with that said i was able to now clear him <laughs> and say well you can be at the dealership so <laughs> it went from like <laughs> so that's where we're at now we have uh he's here um we're taking turns you know trying to keep our social distancing um our dealership has gone to a no contact sale so you buy a car, we, um, we immediately, uh, which I'm interested in to see how the stocks of like DocuSign and e-contracting has gone up. Cause I bet you there's a billion businesses that said, I was thinking about it maybe in the future is like, no, nope, go time. I need electronic signatures. So we've gone to electronic signatures, uh, Lysol in the cars, like, um, in sale. And that's what's happening right now. It's like no contact. We deliver to you completely mobile. Yeah. We we might have to pick your brain on that some because I mean, this is, that's definitely one of the things that we talked about in terms of, uh, I mean, we're, we're going to do the exact same thing. I mean, that was, that was actually in the very first email that I laid out to the team when all this started going down. One of the first things that I said is that the experience is going to change. You know, we're going, to, <coughs> excuse me. I said, we're going to take our, uh, our products and directly to the customer. I mean, if they never want to step foot in our showroom, they never have to. Um, so we need to start laying out that plan now. And, th and those are the kind of things that we're working on from home, trying to gear up. So that way, when we are back in business, we can actually, even before then, even if we're not back at the dealership, those are things that we can start executing now. We don't have to wait. We shouldn't wait. Um, you know, so I think, I think your thought process is, is right. I mean, the, you have, you have to adapt. I would say if we had an advantage at all, it's that I've, you know, I've already been in content creation, for a few years now um, and definitely had new scooters for less in content creation. I mean, we already have nearly 3000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. Um, so we have, we have an audience. We've been con we've been creating content. Uh, we, we don't have a virtual showroom, which is one of the, which was another one of the bullet points that I had laid out. I said, we're going to take really cool videos of each of the products that we sell little walk around videos and, and get them up online. Uh, we haven't done that yet, mainly because of this and, you know, being in contact and pulling our videographer in to, to do the work. And so, <laughs> um, but those are things that are going to be in the pipeline very, 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 very soon. So I think your thought process is right. I mean, you have, you have no choice but to adapt and the businesses that do not will <laughs> fail. And so like, I, I can't, I can't, you know, reiterate that enough if you are a small business and you're just thinking that you're going to uh, sit this one out and and relax and just wait things wait for things to get better, uh, your chances of failing are going to be extremely high. Um, so the more that you can do right now to adapt to the situation um, and and evolve, the the better right and so i think you're i think you are 100 percent on the right track you did exactly the things that you needed to do in the immediate to get this thing turned around and to give you a better chance right and so like and and we're doing the same thing i mean we're doing the exact same thing so um i give you kudos for being on top of the the content because now more than ever your presence your, your online real estate as i call it is going to be stronger. And I think this is where all those little moves that you've been doing, all the hard work, the, 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 the tens of hours of extra hours of work that you've put in per week is going to start to play out 
deeper and deeper we go into no contact um, direct to consumer sale. So I just give, I give it up to you guys, man, like all that extra work. Um, sometimes when you're just sitting there doing a podcast and, and, and maybe like, man, this is this working. Is this tough? You know, like, why am I doing this so much? This is where it pays out, man. And, um, and for the people out there that are like, man, like, let me operate with cash as much cash as possible. Let me try to do things wisely. Let me be careful with my credit line. Let me, uh, you know, uh, just try to do things a little more conservatively and, and do the slow marketing that's hard. I mean, this is where it pays out. Um, and people like me that are behind the eight ball that I haven't created a podcast. I haven't done my, you know, my marketing It's it's going to light up the fire in me now to be like, all right, I get my online real estate. My real estate that's online has to be on point. It has to be on point. It like, as I spend usually about 45 minutes preparing um, our, our dealership every day, like blowing off the leaves, making sure that the bathroom is on point, making sure that like when you walk into the door, there's not smudges on there. As much as that, now it has to flip over to real estate, on, online real estate, where it's like, man, I want to make sure that everything, every point and video on there is, is like strong and like the smudges are out, you know? So kudos to you, bro. To you, well, bro. so let, I mean, let let me comment on that real quick. The, I mean, it's it's cashing in on brand equity, right? I mean, we've yeah. we've been building it up, we've been building it up all of these years. Not even not even like online, but just just through the brand itself, the customer experience, everything over sixteen years. Now it's coming to a point. Now it's coming to a time where we need to really cash in on some of that brand equity. The number of newsletters that we've sent out uh, to our customers has been ten x what we would normally sell out. Um, I mean, send out. So like by, you know, by doing that, like there, there's now, you know, we're cashing in on some of that opportunity to do so. We're throwing, as Gary Vaynerchuk would say, we're throwing more right hooks right now. You know, he's talk, he talks about jabs, jabs, jab, you know, give value, give value, give value, give value. Well, now I'm throwing right hooks. I'm asking, asking, I need your business. I need your business. I need your business. I need your business right now <laughs> more than ever. We need it right now and so we're kind of cashing in on a lot of that brand equity um the the opportunity the thing that i would say is that if you haven't created contact content or built up brand equity now is the perfect time to do so um you know i've been i've been reiterating this fact over and over and over as well we're all going through the same thing we're all we can all relate to this if you haven't created content before, now is the perfect time to do so because the place you can start is by pulling out your phone, pulling out an audio, creating a podcast, doing whatever, and talking about your experience, creating a journal, and just saying, hey, so this, this is, I, I'm Rafael Diaz, and I, I started this car dealership six months ago, and you know these are the trials that I've been through in the first six months. I hit, I hit these obstacles. But now I'm facing probably the bit, one of the biggest trials we'll ever face and then and talking about it. You know what I mean? And I think what's interesting about that is, I mean, it's the reason why we're doing this podcast. I mean, we can learn from each other's experiences and understand, okay, well, how, like, how is Raphael navigating this as, as a startup? Like, how's he doing it? And then how's Colin, how's Colin and Michael doing it as a, as a 16 year old company, you know, and how, how's a, you know, how's a company, uh, you know, that has 300 team members handling it. I mean, we can learn from a variety of sources and see how everybody's navigating this and, and talking about it and journaling it and creating content around it is a great place to start. I mean, cause right now everybody's attention is on their computer and on their devices. I mean, we're all like, we're having a meeting via zoom right now, <laughs> you know, we're having a podcast via zoom. So, so there's, there's that, uh, entire aspect to I have this a question. that um, yeah. it, can i because usually a lot of times i hear a lot of things great things that these you know business owners are doing they're like oh man i wish i could be doing that but i like to also talk about some of the bad things that i've done in the midst of this coronavirus thing <laughs> so maybe somebody else could take a little bit away from you know my mistakes so far so um if that's okay with you yeah all right so number one um i have my routine of of prayer and meditation in the morning has uh has lacked and when it first started and that really threw my rhythm off so if you're a person who 
works out, um, praise. And, and you know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're not, please continue to do your rhythm of that because from there and that it brings some peace, I think to people. So for me, that's definitely something that I made a mistake on. Um, I've also made a mistake of, of not navigating the relationship for those who have spouses out there. Um, not doing a great job of navigating this with her, like as far as venting too much or not, uh, not taking the time to keep her involved, I guess, but not too deep, I guess. I don't know how to, I, do you see it in my voice that I don't even know how to navigate that? So trying to learn to navigate with the, your number one supporter, which is usually your spouse, um, has been a mistake that I've made as well. Also, man, for anybody out there that's not in their financials, that doesn't have their tiers of like financials down pat, like this is more than ever a time that I have for the last few months been playing around with financials, trying to get the books okay, operation costs, you know, down. Me and actually, I'd like to give a shout out to Colin again. He put me on a program that says, hey, you need to separate all of your accounts financially. And guess what? I'm just starting to do that, but I, I made a mistake of not having that from day one, you know? So I don't know, guys, like if there's anything I can say, please pray hard, um, meditate hard, have your alone time away from the phone, family, everybody, if you can do that, even if it's a, a few moments. Um, Try to navigate with your spouse as sensitive and kind um, as possible, which I know that's kind of tough. Um, and also your books, man, like get into your books financially. You need to know when to call it quits. Like if you know, you got everybody has their own different layers, you know, but. I think Raphael, I think it's a, it's a perspective shift. Yeah. It's a, men yeah. it's a mental game, right? So you gotta like, you just gotta change uh, the way you know i think a lot of people are and and not not you and i mean like just a lot of people are looking at this thing as uh as a super negative yeah. impact right we're looking at this as man this is going to hurt this is going to crush business this is going to destroy our economy this is going to destroy gainesville like i mean like there there's this this mindset that people have and you have to change that mindset um for me I would say that the opposite has happened. I would say that I'm, I'm spending more time at home. So what this is doing is allowing me, uh, like I have less travel time. I've had less, I've had less one-to-ones that take me 15 minutes to get to a coffee shop, sit there for an hour and then 15 minutes to get back. I've, but I've had more one-to-ones that have been super valuable through, through Zoom, these meetings, even team meetings that we've had. Um, and I would say like in, in the morning, I'm actually I'm actually spending more time more time uh, in my Bible, more time journaling and writing out my prayers um, and that kind of thing. And I'll tell you, like the verse that's really stuck with me is is Matthew six thirty three, which is but seek first His kingdom and His righteous righteousness, and all all these things will be given to you as well. Um, I mean, like I've been hanging that ver hanging on to that verse, and that verse has been popping up over and over and over. I mean, we were watching the Bible story with our children, which we've which we haven't done that yet, and we're like going through that series together. And and of course, I hear Jesus like speak those words, and I'm like, you know, the, it's just been coming up over and over and over again. And I think I think you have to get creative, especially on the website, because we can look at it as like, oh, there's no there's no restaurants right now you know, or like you can't go to a restaurant. So it's so difficult to go on a date. You know, my, my wife and I, like we've spent more time on this back patio in the last two weeks than we have in the last two years. And, you know, we got these nice little lights around. We put the kids to bed. We lit a candle. We brought a bottle of wine out here and we just enjoyed each other's time. And we had our quarantine date night on the back patio, you know? So I think, I think I would encourage you know, everyone to, to really get those creative juices flowing, take, take the time to uh, invest in that spiritual relationship in the relationship with your wife um, and, and just into yourself as well. I mean, you're talking about the system that you were referring to is the profit first system. Um, there's no better time than right now than to educate yourself. 
right? And to learn and to read um, and, and to set that stuff up. Like you can set those, start setting those structures up while you have this extra time where you're not, you know, not being interrupted. And I, and I, I hate the word saying interrupted by customers, right? But the truth is you don't know what your day looks like on the day to day, right? Mm -hmm. Like you go, you go in, you're like, I, I know I'm going to work from nine to five or for us it's 10 to six and, and you have a plan. But if a customer walks in the front door, your plan is now the customer. And it takes away from those times to set up these structures and set up these processes that are also important. So, um, so I don't, I don't mean for the word interrupted to sound negative. I mean, of course I cherish every single one of our customers. Um, but it's, but it's that, you know, now, now's the time. Now's the perfect time to, to work on a lot of those things. So I, I thank you for that vulner, vulnerability and for sharing that because I think it's extremely relatable. And I think that um, a lot of people are, are thinking in that way. And I would just say, uh, you know, encourage everybody to really change the mindset. Look at, look, as my, my, my man, Alex Willis would say, look for the opportunity. It's your job to look for the opportunity in the darkness. And, and we need to, we all need to do that. So uh, Mike, you got any thoughts on that, man? Yeah. I just want to add one thing to that. Cause I think you guys are both spot on, but it's, it's, it's take stock of these things that you're enjoying right now because we all believe that eventually there's going to be some return to normalcy, at least normal as we knew it. Right. But, but what doesn't have to happen is you go back to the way things were uh, whenever you've got all these good habits that you're building right now um, and new ways to run your business, new time to spend less community, all these kind of things, right? Like, like you can carry that with you and take stock of the things that, that, that you're enjoying from this, that, that's breathing life into you, that's giving you new perspective. And don't let them don't let them slip away when the things return, you know. Yeah, I mean that's that's fantastic. I, mean, I think it's great advice. I mean, let's let's let the you know everybody talks about like the status quo, right? What what are what are the new status quos going to be that come from this? I mean, let's let all the status quos that come from this be the positive things, right? Like be all the great all the greatness that came from this, and none of the, and none of the negative things. So. Um, dude, this has been super, this has been inspiring for me. I'm all, I'm all pumped up now. You got me all I'm pumped up. Go. Man. Like, let's go. <laughs> so, let's go, so, baby. Hey. It's the best, so, hey, it's the best time to live right now, guys. And again, I, I want to say that I'm so thankful because my grandfather never had this opportunity like I have today. Um, I, you know, we come from immigrant family. I'm immigrants to this country. And just to be uh, with this many resources, and with youth on my side, um, it, it's just, I'm so thankful, man. I, I am, I, I can't believe I have a wife. I can't believe I have people like Colin, Tom Galat, Greenhouse Church, business leaders. This is like unprecedented time where normal people have access to great leadership, to great people, to information that we didn't have before 20 years ago that I just wouldn't have. So it, when I say it's a great day to be alive, it's a great day to be alive because if there's a trial coming, which we're going through right now, we can get through it. Like we really can. It's going to hurt. It's going to suck. But man, it's so much better than 30, like, you know, three decades ago, two generations back when they went through the Spanish malaria, you know, Spanish, whatever the, the flu, whatever. I don't know what the, the last one was in 1918. Um, we have the resources guys and, and the access, access ability, the accessibility to some of the greatest minds and locally. I'm not talking about like, billionaires i'm just talking about locally here in gainesville florida um i'm just thankful man yeah well and i would encourage our audience like if you need help if you uh just need somebody to talk to like reach out to us i mean like i've been taking out so much time just to like have uh conversations with people and just to just to really offer them a word of encouragement and just really let everybody know listen like listen to me right now you are not alone like Right. We're all going through this in some sort of capacity. Even the people who have got reserves stacked up, uh, I've been talking to some of them. Like they, they still have uh, concerns, and you know, I mean, it's like we're all going through this in some sort of capacity. So you are not alone, um, Raphael. Thanks so much for joining us, man. You're awesome. Give uh, you know, tell everybody where they can find you, your address, phone number. 
Like somebody go yeah. buy a car from this guy right now. <laughs> like, let's go, let's go. You know, you're going to need one. <laughs> well, I'll make it very clear. It's main street motors of Gainesville.com. Uh, we specialize in 10 grand cars, 20 grand trucks, which equal out to 200 payment cars and three 80 payment trucks, very affordable, depreciated. Um, anybody can reach me at my direct cell. It's three, five, two, eight, seven, four, six, three, eight, seven. And again, uh, thank you guys so much. Um, whatever I can do for everybody out there, whether it's just a little pet me up talk, you just need a little cool cup of water for your soul. Um, anything guys, love let it. me know. Love it. Keep your head up, man. I love you, dude. You're doing great things. Go buddy. Let's go. God bless guys. I'll see you later. See you, man. Best of luck, bud. And uh, podcast family, remember, we also need your support. Definitely do what you can to, uh, to uh, you know, hey, man, like, buy, buy a shirt. Look at the shirt Michael's got on. Like, buy, right. buy a shirt. Buy a shirt. Yeah. Um, you know, become a sponsor if you're a business. You want to make a sponsor. We're, we're doing, like, really inexpensive sponsorships right now. Um, that will also help us just with the production of this um, and paying our team and that kind of thing. And, and finally, if you just want to donate to our show, I've never done this before, but like, um, if you want to donate to our show, we could really use it right now and you can do so, uh, just through Venmo. If you just want to Venmo me at Colin Austin, C O L L I N A U S T I N. Um, that will, that's just my personal Venmo and it goes directly to the W H O A G N B uh, bank account. And it, that would, that would help us with some of this as well. So we appreciate, appreciate your support and you guys. This is the WHOA GNV podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go. Whoa! <laughs> we will see you later. Bye.